Everyone comes to Hollywood for a reason. Saints, sinners, artists, and anti artists, and all the beautiful people in America. On September 24th, 1996, I became one of those people. But why did I go to Hollywood? To discover every dark secret. An irresistible earth pulled me here. I knew I belonged in Hollywood among the dispensary for filth and the perfumed skeletons inside the crosses. I wanted to learn more about the darkest parts of human nature because that was the only way to learn more about myself. Of course, that was just the reason why. The how, that was something different. I came to Hollywood as a visionary seeking truth. I needed to sell my ideas, expose secrets, and question everything I knew about the world. Being a statist was wasn't just fun; it was necessary. In a time so full of confusion, somebody had to shine a light on the truth, and maybe that person was me. For two weeks, I prowled along for Sunset Script, learning the ins and outs of Hollywood. Each night, I felt my dreams getting closer, more real. The glittering celebrity would, world was opening its doors to me, beckoning him in me inside. Until two weeks later, on October 5th, when it happened. I've gone to a club, but not just any club. One that hosted the darker side of LA nightlife. I wasn't disappointed. Here were beautiful people everywhere, swarm in the dark low, slow, if not in music for rattling of dancers in the cases. Something felt different about this place. It wasn't just another club, no. It felt more like another world. Oppressive, seductive, and terrifying. To calm my nerves, I approached the bar to order my favorite drink something. Sweet, light, and whisk. It was delicious, but I didn't get more than a few seconds to enjoy the taste. When I looked up, someone down the bar was staring at me intently. A tall, dark-hearted man, dressed in all black, his gone face masked by a skull piece and a star. After a few moments, he stopped closer, only stopping when his tassel now touched mine. But it didn't feel like a pickup, not even like bold flirting. Suddenly, I knew I was in very real danger. And yet, as I stared at my own reflection in his dimpled pupils, I realized I couldn't move. I was completely hypnotized by what he whispered in my ear. He leaned in, lips called a bosom against my skin, and said, I want to show you something. And from that moment, whatever it was, I knew I had to see it. Sinking his long nails against my shoulder, the man led me to ask the filthy hallway, with his filthier bathrooms, wild moans and whistling people. The snake too many jokes leaked from under the doors, along with wheat force and light. But I didn't have much time to plan for cinematic moment. The man grabbed my hair and pushed me against the wall, which was which was for posters for bands that nobody cared about. I'm going to take your life forever. But you'll never learn my name, he whispered. 
how does that make you feel? I came here to tell you this. I know you did. Everyone comes to Hollywood to tell you this. As far as the low words will mold in his thoughts, he smiled. And two long, cool fans glimmered between his lips. Bandits. No, they couldn't be real. And yet, for some horrible reason, I knew they were. In that moment, I suddenly felt. For lust. <coughs> I trembled with excitement. This has always been my fantasy. I didn't care if it was on either wet dream. I wanted to be in Phil, trained, and weapons. And then, I felt the bite. A agonizing pain ripped through me, st stealing into my neck, spreading through my whole body. I couldn't make a sound. I couldn't do anything except stand still. Just like a deer and had lice. But slowly, pain started to melt away. It was better than anything. Better than sex. Better than drugs. Better than money. Or love. Or fame. And yet, it felt that all the things rolled up into one sensation. His icy hands and lips pulled me down into his incredible warm until my body couldn't take it anymore. I felt the blood draining from my veins, my breathing coming to a halt, my heart finally stopping. I realized what was happening, but I was too drowned in poor, mindless bliss to even care. I was dying. Was I dead? Drink. Something passed against my lips. A man liquid dripped down my throat, sending a jaw through my body. I should have been dead, but I wasn't. Indeed, I was half awake and half dreaming. In the middle of a serene moment, I felt strangely. Powerful. Nothing could stop me. I was dangerous, impossibly strong. I could destroy the whole world, and a part of me wanted to. And so Hal spreads his legs. His voice was hastily in my ear. The world went dark. 